How you doing, Real Motivation? Terrence McKinney back with a new video. Uh, today's video is going to be like straight from the heart. Uh, it's going to be a little different. It's dealing more with the spiritual side of things. I done gave y'all plenty of videos on how to be successful, how to get your mind right, and the steps you should take to get back on the road to success. Now we're going to dig into the spiritual side a little bit more. And the subject today is, is dealing with the kids. And this been dealing, this been on my mind maybe for like the last two or three weeks. It's been sitting heavy on my conscience and my spirit been telling me to do this video. And basically it's about us not raising our kids with the spirit of God in them. I mean, I'm a mentor uh, in my occupation. I employ 15 year olds, 16 year olds, 17 year olds, 18 year olds. I'm active in the community. Uh, I got tons of nieces and nephews. Uh, I talk to all my friends, kids. So I interact with kids a lot. And when I'm in interacting with these kids, these kids can tell me everything under the sun. But when I ask them one thing about God, or anything of the spirit, I ask them a spiritual question, they get stumped easily. And we blaming our kids for everything. We saying they bad. We saying they disrespectful. We saying they don't listen. Uh, we saying they liars. You know, we chastising them. We putting them in a room. Uh, we, we giving them medicine. Uh, we sending them to special schools. Uh, we, we, we trying everything in the world, but the only thing we ain't tried is y'all. We ain't put the spirit of God in our kids. Uh, when we was growing up, well, we knew God. I mean, we knew who God was. We had a faith established in our life. I mean, we went to church. I mean, and I'm not putting church on the pedestal because to this day I don't go to church. And, but when we was kids, we was in church every Sunday and every Saturday, and we, a, a faith and a, a fear of God was established in our lives, so we, we knew it was a God. When you talk to today's kids, because I'm talking to them, and I'm asking them questions, and they don't got no concept of God. Some of them never been to church, some of them never read a single page out of the Bible, but they can tell you everything that's going on in the rap world, they can tell you the hottest song, they can tell you the hottest dance. They can tell you the biggest entertainer. They can tell you about every new game that's out. They can tell you about the best movie out. They can tell you about what's going on Instagram, what's going on on TMZ, what's going on on Media Takeout. They can tell you about what's trending, what's the new TikTok of the week. They can tell you everything that's going on under the sun. But the minute you ask them something, a spiritual question, or you ask them something about God, they don't got a clue. They they don't know what this where to start at. They staring at you like you ask them a question, like a calculus question or uh, something where they got to go do some research. And that's not their fault. I mean, that's, that's the leader's the parents and the guardians that fall back on us and, and that fall on us for not putting the, the spirit of God in our kids life like if we ain't putting the spirit of God in our kids life then what are we expecting you know if we letting them you know go in a room and you know be on YouTube all day be on Instagram all day and they got a phone glued to their hand or they glued to the computer, then guess what? We letting the world raise them. And when you let the world raise your kids, you're going to get worldly results. And so when they in the house and they watching the war on Chirac and they know how many rappers is real rappers versus fake rappers and they know that this person shot that person and they watching Killers Live on Instagram and they watching Killers Live on World Star. And they seeing all this at, at a young age. What do you expect that's going to happen to them, you know, when they get older? You shouldn't be surprised when they turning out to be 
gang bangers, when they turning out to be drug dealers, or when they turning out to be drug users, or they turning out to be liars, or they turning out to be thieves, or at a young age they showing perverted stuff, or they turning out to be gay. I mean, what do you expect when you ain't putting the Spirit of God in these kids? I mean, we had the Spirit of God in us. You know, and so it was always certain lines that we knew not to cross. Like, it was just certain things that we wouldn't do. And when you got the Spirit of God in you, it makes a big difference. I mean, and I'm not saying that I was a saint growing up, because when I got of age, I, I went buck wild, and I was a gangster. I was a drug dealer. I carried a gun every day. I sold drugs for maybe two years straight, sun up to sun down. And I did a lot of things that I wasn't proud of. But you know what? When I was doing those things, every single day, it never sat right with me. In my soul, I knew I was doing something wrong. I knew I was doing something wrong. I mean, I always felt empty. It don't matter the cars I, I bought, the clothes I, I bought, uh, the houses that I moved into, or it don't matter what I spent my money on. I always felt empty, and I always knew that I was doing something wrong. You know what, and to be perfectly honest, the day I got busted and the day I went to prison, it was like a burden was lifted off my back because I knew it was finally my chance to get out and do something different, but that was the spirit of God in me. I knew I was doing something wrong. I think today's kids and that's growing up, they don't have a clue that they're doing something morally wrong because they don't have the spirit of God in them, and we ain't putting it in them. They don't have a clue. They actually think what they're doing and what they seeing is actual normal because that's what was being taught to them. That's because we ain't instilling the laws, statutes, and commandments in them. You know, we fill in their lives with so much other stuff, so much material stuff, and so much stuff that they see on TV that they don't got a clue that they doing stuff morally wrong. Just think about it. If you got a, a disrespectful child that ain't listening to you, that's disrespecting you nonstop, cussing you out, uh, not listening to you, going to school, acting out, and when they come home, you trying to talk to them, they walking away, they going in their room, and, and you ain't reading the Bible to them, and, and you ain't installing them. Just think about if you told them what the fifth commandment was, uh, honor their father and their mother so your days would be long. Just think if you told your kids when they was little growing up and you was telling them every day you was reading the Ten Commandments and not even just the Ten Commandments, more commandments to them and you was telling them like, you know what, if you want to live long and you want to have a long, prosperous life, you better honor your father and your mother because this ain't right here from Yah that if you don't do that, then guess what, you ain't going to be on this earth very long and that would make a difference in a kid's life when you were still in that in, in a, a young age inside their life, that would make a big difference. Like. Uh, and it's, it's a law for you. God gave this law to you. He said, I mean, Deuteronomy 6, 7, say, you know, you know, obey these, 6, 6 and 6, 7, say, obey these commandments and teach them to your kids. I mean, teach them when you walking by, you know, teach them when you sitting in the house, teach them when you lay down, and teach them when you wake up. So that's your job to instill the spirit of God in these kids' life. You just can't let them, you know, get taught by the world. If you get them taught, they gonna get taught by the world, then guess what, it's gonna be worldly results. I mean, they gonna, like I said, they gonna grow up to be in the gang. They gonna grow up to be drug dealers. They gonna grow up to be drug, user, drug users. I mean, you gotta explain to these kids, you know what I mean? You, you gotta let them know, like, you know, uh, don't you know that when God flooded the world, like, it was because all this wicked stuff was going on at the time, and, and, and it, it, nobody was doing right across the planet. Everybody was killing each other. Everybody was backstabbing each other. It, it was all type of wicked things going on. Don't you know God dealt with people like this once, and he destroyed the world? And if you continue down that path, you know, your life going to be shortened, and you're going to run into all type of trouble because... Guess what? If you don't chastise your kids, the most I will. He, he's not going to play with your kids. And just like he ain't played with you, and he's not going to play with your kids. He, he's going to chastise them for the things that they was doing. I mean, because that's just what it is. And so, 
and we ain't explaining this to our kids and then we sugarcoat and stuff to them and we telling them the wrong things, then we setting them for, for failure. I mean, if, if you got a child that's gay, you got to explain to your cat, child, you know, like you, you got to let that be their decision, but you got to let them know that the most I look at that as an abomination and he destroyed cities for that. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for that. So if that's the way you want to live your life, then you set yourself up for failure. We cannot play when it comes to our kids because that's our future generation. And if we sugarcoat and stuff and we not telling them what the, the holy book says, then we set them up for failure. And when you going home and you reading your kid when they young, you, you reading them bedtime stories, man, it's time to stop that. They don't need to learn about the Little Mermaid. They don't need to learn about Sleeping Beauty. They don't need to learn about whatever other book you read them. They, you need to pick up that Holy Bible and, and read real stories and explain to your kids real stories that happen in the Bible. So that way you putting the Spirit of God in them and you putting something else on their mind. I mean, and, and it's a lot of times we as parents, we got to do better. We got to lead by example. I remember, you know, when my kids was young, I used to blame everything I did, you know, drug dealing and everything else to feed my kids. Like, you know, uh, my son would be in the other room and I'd be selling drugs in the other room. And, and somebody asked me why I'm doing that. And I used to tell them, uh, I got to feed my kids. You know, I, I got to put food on the table. I got to do this and I got to do that. But Yahshua said it alone, uh, Man don't live on bread alone, but every word from Yah. So it's time to feed these kids something else. We got to feed their spirit. I mean, and, and it ain't going to never be cool to do something wrong to feed our kids. And that's something I had to learn the hard way. And, and that's something that I know a lot of people long the hard way. Because guess what? When you're gone and you locked up and, and you serve your time, you ain't putting no meals on the table. And guess what? Another man going to be raising your kid and you ain't going to better do nothing about it. And... It's time for us to feed our kids' spirit. If we want to do something about the next generation, then it got to start with us. We got to be leaders. We got to be, I mean, if, if, if you're a guardian, if you're a parent, you know, you, you got to instill the spirit of God in your kids' life. Like, and we can't sit around and watch our kids watch us uh, smoke weed all day, drink all day, and do everything under the sun and then expect them to grow up and do something different. It just don't work like that. I mean, that's that's not how life goes. I mean, or regardless if you you want to believe it or regardless if you know it, you you the most impressionable person on your kid's life. Whatever kid you around the most, they going to reflect what you doing. You know, you teaching them subconsciously. If you ain't teaching them, you know, consciously, you teaching them subconsciously. And so this video might offend some people, but this ain't for nobody personal. It's just something that I see every single day. Like yesterday when I was on the internet, you know, Googling, uh, Googling some stuff. And I seen a four-year-old uh, dancing and twerking. And this was a little boy, like going crazy. And you hear in the background, his parents hyping him up, telling him to go, 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 go. But one thing you didn't see, you didn't see you know, a male in the background. It's, it's all females in the background watching this little four-year-old boy twerk. And that's just some of the, the wickedness that, that you see every single day. And that ain't right because we ain't setting these kids up for success. I mean, we got to, you know, have more of an impact on our kids' life, you know. And so if this offending you, then guess what? It is what it is. I hope you get offended to do something different because... I care about the kids and I care about the next generation and I want to I want them to do right and I want them you know to continue to you you know set their kids up to, to do better and we got to instill the right things in, in the youth so we can have a, a better generation so hopefully this message get across to somebody and and hopefully it hit home to a lot of people and hopefully it motivates you to do something different.